I hate this book. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. Really, it's... it's... It's just kind of impressive how much of a failure it is, just on, on every front, really. It's got a shitty main character, it's got shitty supporting side characters, it's got a shitty story, it takes place in a shitty world, it... I have trouble even thinking of the proper words to describe just how much this book is just a boring failure. That, that, that's the bigger thing. It's a failure on it almost every front, but it's also just fucking boring. So, um, let me, let me just, let, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's just go to synopsis. So, Blood Rose Rebellion is the story of a young English aristocrat named Anna. Anna is a bit of an outcast among her family and high society because she can't use magic, which most people in high society can, but not only that, but spells just seem to sort of break around her. You know, if you cast spells on her or near her, then they have a tendency of going uh, berserk and they can hurt people. So, Anna's kind of an outcast to begin with, but then, within the first 20 pages of the book, her sister is trying to... Oh god, this is why I hate Anna so much. I. So her sister is trying to do this thing called her debut, which is where she introduces herself and her magic to the, the circle, which are the group of people that control uh, magic in this world. They're, they're like a magical congress, I guess, is the best way of putting it. And they... God, I... This, this book just drains life out of me. So Anna's sister is doing her debut, which is going to affect the rest of her life, right? And Anna's supposed to stay far away from it so she doesn't fuck up any of her sister's spells. Which is a little harsh, but okay, it makes sense. I, I'm sorry, it, it sucks for you, Anna, but whatever, I get it. Meanwhile... Uh, some dude that Anna's all wet for, whose name is Freddy, for some reason, because, yeah, that, when I think of Victorian England and people's names, I think of Freddy. That, that, that's, that makes sense. That's a total normal name. And literally on the third page of the book, I made a note of it, because it's that stupid. She spends the entire page talking about how much she loves Freddy, and then Freddy takes Anna to this, like, secret spot where she can watch her sister's debut because she's a dumbass and she she kisses freddie and she's like oh my gosh i'm in love uh you know like teenage girl stupid like stupid teenage girl writing like it's looking down on teenage girls and then she finds out freddie's actually into her sister so she just wrecks her sister's entire debut like blows shit up people almost no one really gets injured or dies but they almost do and, God, so Anna's a bitch, <laughs> and, and so they, the circle decides they want to experiment on Anna, or s something, and so her family sends her, and her grandmother, off to Hungary, because her grandmother's from Hungary, and they have family there, and they're just planning on letting her stay there for a while until the heat dies down, and then she can come back to England. So... Like, like I, like I said several times, Anna's just a bitch. Like, she literally ruins her sister's chances at a good life just because of some asshole she's all wet over. Like, God, I, I know that's a vulgar way of putting it, but that's really all they have in common. Like, she, she thinks Freddy's pretty, and she thinks he's nice. Well, he's not. I'll, I'll tell you that much. He's not like you find out in a, like less than thirty pages. He's he's a dick, and then he just disappears, and he's never heard from in the story again. And uh, God, like she's just not a good character. <laughs> and uh, so she does that. There's a quote near the end of the book, actually. I won't spoil the circumstances surrounding it, but another character calls Anna selfish, weak, and frightened because she didn't do something that she promised to do when she promised to do it and again I'm not gonna 
spoil what it is or what exactly is going on, but a bunch of people wind up getting hurt because of it. And then, uh, like, she just screwed everybody over. <laughs> it's hard to tell how much I hate without spoilers, but, like, the beginning part's pretty bad. And then, um, let's see, later on, she meets her cousins at the uh, estate in Hungary. And, oh yeah, I might be mispronouncing some of their names because I don't speak Hungarian, and I'm sorry about that, but honestly, this book, it, there's a pronunciation guy, but I just don't care enough to, to, to actually look through it and memorize how to say people's names. This, this book is not worth the effort. So she meets her cousin Matthias right after being invited into his home, and is getting to stay there for free, and he's helping her out and preventing her from becoming some sort of guinea pig for the English circle. And she literally spends the first paragraph where she meets him describing how she thinks he's ugly. Like... Anna, you're just a cunt. I don't like you. Even when she's not being a cunt, she's just boring. She, She's a passive protagonist, okay? She, she does very little without being told to do it first. Like, she... I'm... I mean... Uh, she reacts to what other people want. The, she has very little dreams or ambitions of her own. The only thing that she... Su the only thing that she uh, wants of her own volition and tries to do is she falls in love... falls in love with this uh, gypsy boy... or... <clears throat> sorry, apparently they don't like being called gypsies uh, they're Romani, sorry about that, but she falls in love with this Romani boy that she meets in Hungary, and she wants to reform society that, that so that their relationship is acceptable. It's like, uh, okay, that's, that's fine. But she's also, like, making out with every other dude she meets in this book, so it, it doesn't save a whole lot of her character, honestly. Um, and that, that's another thing, most of the men in this book are there just for Anna to fawn over. For, and she she does it for like a page, and then she'll say, oh no, I don't actually love him. But then later on she'll be like, oh my gosh, he's so pretty. God, I can't, I can't even articulate right now. This, this book just sucked energy out of me. I, I don't like it. I hate it. <laughs> okay, so Anna's a bitch. Uh, her sister's kind of a bitch too. Her mom's kind of a bitch. That She just sent her away, and it she, they, Anna talks about a lot how she just didn't like her mom. Uh, her mom's upbringing it was very harsh. Yada yada yada. Um, uh, the only characters that I kind of liked in this were uh, Gabor, the Romani boy that uh, Anna falls in love with. He 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 wants to reform society, you know, because his people are genuinely oppressed. That's one good thing this book did. It shows how uh, shitty people treated the Romani. Um, and he wants to make things better for them, so, yeah, like, he, he's actually not bad. Uh, Anna's father is barely in it, but he seems to genuinely love and care for her. Uh, her grandmother, same story. All the other characters are just either boring or... Ah, really just boring. <laughs> that's, that's this book in a nutshell. It's, it's vacuous. It's empty. It's boring. Um, let's see. There's two main villains in this, uh, both of which switch sides several times, so I don't know why they ever thought they could trust them. It doesn't even really matter if I say who one of them is, because he doesn't show up until three quarters through the book. So, it, like, he's never even mentioned before that. I, I just... Okay, moving on from characters. Um, Story. Boring. Yeah, the... It... See, this ties into the shitty world building in this. I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. But, um, so this takes place in a kind of interesting era of history. It's, a uh, Hungary, uh, well, which is part of the Austrian Empire at that time, so they're, you know, subjugated by other people. And it takes place right before the 1848 revolution, which was a real thing that happened. Uh, in the book it happens in 1847, though. And it also ends differently, but again, I won't say exactly what happens. So, that's a kind of interesting period in history. You, you could do something with that. 
but they don't really spend any time focusing on the revolution or why people would want it. They, 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 don't, they bring it in a little bit at the end, but th there's very little. Like, there's also a second revolution going on against the Circle members and the uh, Luminators, who are the people that use magic in this. They're called Luminators. But, like, so there's two conflicting revolutions happening right now. Like, I guess you should call it Blood Rose Rebellions or something. I, I don't know. It just... <laughs> The story, it's mostly just Anna wandering around, finding out a couple of things about magic and fawning over dudes, and then revolution happens at the very end. Okay, the, I don't know. Does that count as a spoiler? I, I don't know. It, it's in the title, okay? It's not a spoiler. I don't care. But... Uh, so, story's boring. Uh, but... I, I guess one good thing about this, I didn't personally like it, but the prose is kind of neat. It, it's written in 19th century style, so if, you ever read, if you've ever read anything like Jane Eyre or Pride and Prejudice or anything like that, it, it's written like that, and I don't particularly like that style, but if, it's, if you like it, then you'll probably enjoy this book more than I did. So I guess on a technical level, prose is pretty good. You know, the, the, the real area where this book just fails far more spectacularly than any other area, like, besides the shitty characters, the boring story, the obnoxiously fancy prose, like, the world building in this is honestly some of the shittiest I've ever seen. So on the back cover of this book, there's a quote from another author. It says, Everything I love in a fantasy, history, noblemen, magic, romance, and a revolution. Blood Rose Rebellion had me charmed from the first page. Virginia Becker. Yeah, it has everything I love in fantasy, too. Except for, you know, fucking fantasy. So you have this society where only the upper classes have access to magic. Because magic was locked away a thousand years earlier in this giant spell called the Binding. And uh, you can only have access to magic if the circle allows you to have ma access to magic. That's, that's a pretty cool idea. There's, you could do a lot with that. But here's the thing, the world is exactly the same as ours, other than that. All of the countries are exactly the same, all of the history is exactly the same, the same fucking people are running the countries, okay? This is not even a fantasy world at all, okay? When you have the, the United Kingdom still run by Queen Victoria, only she's a magician now, or illuminator now, sorry, I don't give a shit, and you still have uh, France, which was run by Napoleon for ten years, and then afterwards, he was deposed and they put a bourbon on the throne. And you still have the Austrian Empire, which rules over Hungary and Croatia, and all the same areas that it did before. And you still have... The, they mentioned several times that the United States broke off and, and has formed its own country over in... well, over in America, obviously. But this is not a fantasy world. This is exactly the same as our world, okay? The only time it changes at all is when they're discussing, hey, there's magic, or when they're discussing, or at the very end, because, again, the revolution happens a year earlier than it did in real life, and it ends differently. But, it just... The, the, the whole point of a fantasy world is to create something new that you can find out cool stuff about and es escape from reality in, and... So, so this fails at that. And it fails at being alternate history because, again, it's exactly the fucking same. There's no difference at all. I guess we're supposed to believe that everything in human history from then until now has happened exactly the same, even though there's fucking magic involved? Like, like there was never any revolution or anything that happened before? Except for Napoleon? Like, I... And... <laughs> There, there was nothing, really. Nothing has changed. Like, the Roman Empire was still there. Uh, King Charlemagne, they mentioned, uh, or Emperor Charlemagne, sorry. They mentioned he's the one that did the binding. He, he was still around. He, he still did exactly the same shit that he did before. It, magic changed nothing at all? That's, that is the most fucking boring alternate history world ever. So it fails at fantasy. It fails at being alternate history. And it, 
it, it, it obviously can't be historical fiction, because, again, fucking magic. And... Just... It... it it's so nonsensical. There, there's... There's really nothing to say about it other than that. It's it's nonsensical as fuck, and... Y you know, when I... When I read the summary for this book, I thought... This looks kind of boring. This looks kind of generic. It looks... You know, it looks dumb. I, I, I wasn't expecting anything going into it. But... When... When, when you feel that way about something, you always have... A, a small sliver of hope that maybe you'll be wrong. You know, may maybe this book would turn out to be pretty good. You know, it, it might play with tropes, it it might have interesting characters, it might have good action, it, it could have a neat world that it takes place in, but it doesn't do any of that. It, it, it does absolutely nothing good. Like, there's... Like, I guess this book isn't, like, offensively bad or anything, but it's... It's boring as hell. <laughs> there's, there's, there's nothing for me to say about it other than that. It's, it is boring. Uh, don't read it. Don't read the sequels. So that was the review. If you liked it, subscribe. If you didn't, tell me I'm a piece of shit and you hate me.